Joining me today, I want to talk about a potential profile for psychopathy based upon the five-factor model of personality. And this is based on research by Lenham and Whittager, 2007. Some of the terms are slightly different from the ones they use in their research, but it is the same model, the same five-factor model. All right, as you know about the five-factor model of personality, it has five broad domains. Under each one are six facets that comprise that domain. So if we were to look here for a profile, what, they, what Len, Lenham and Whittager asked were experts in psychopathy to score the five-factor model assessment as they would expect somebody who's high in psychopathy to score. So what you're seeing here, the blue indicates where they scored low and the green indicates where folks would score high based upon expert opinion. Let's take a look at this. So under extroversion, with friendliness, they score low, they're distant and reserved. With assertiveness, they're dominant and ascendant, uh, which makes sense. They feel like they're better than others. They should be able to lead other people. Excitement seeking, they crave excitement and need stimulation. Notice that they're low on all six of the facets for agreeableness. They're suspicious of others. They're willing to lie, self-centered, aggressive, arrogant and conceited and hard-hearted. Under conscientiousness, they score high. They do feel competent and they can be intelligent. Uh, psych psychopathy doesn't uh, necessarily affect uh, intelligence. It's in a different part of the brain that's related to the limbic system and the ability to feel and experience fear, to see fear in others and feel it in themselves. They just don't, or not as readily. Dutifulness. Uh, they have a casual consciousness and, and morality. They do what they want to do, and regardless of who gets hurt. They score low. They tend to procrastinate. And they score low in cautiousness. They make snap decisions. They're hasty. With neuroticism, they are calm. They score low in anxiety. Again, they do not experience fear and anxiety like other people. They don't recognize it in others. It also makes them really good at deceit and manipulation because they don't have the tells many people would have. They don't blush. They don't sweat. They don't have the uh, more exaggerated body movements when they're lying. They're really, really good at it. This is why superficial charm is a strength of theirs in terms of interviewing or luring victims. Okay, depression, they're low in depression, uh, according to these experts, and that they just don't feel that as well. They don't feel emotions in general as well. However, they do, they can get angry. I was surprised that that was, that was not higher on this one. I think I've seen some scales where it was. They're self-conscious. Uh, uh, they score low in self-consciousness. They're undisturbed by awkward situations, which means, hey, I'm undisturbed by it so I can just do stuff uh, that, um, that other people may feel uncomfortable to do. They can do it without feeling anything. Neuroticism, impulsiveness, yes, very high in impulsiveness. This kind of relates to me for craving excitement stimulation. And low in vulnerability, they can cope, okay? They, again, they're expert at not showing emotions. And here for openness to experience, we have one low. They have a low value of feelings. They just don't experience them, as I've said. And then they have high, they, they prefer novelty and variety. Again, we come back up here to excitement and stimulation. All right, so I, hopefully this gives you an idea of a potential profile of psychopathy and what it would look like. There are five-factor model assessments that are online. And let me know your thoughts. I look forward to talking to you on the next video. Take good care.